Hi, welcome to another session of uh, Wing Chun Kun. So uh, here I'm going to demonstrate the closing hands of one of the first section. So uh, just to uh, recap, I'm going to be explaining the Siu Lim Tao in a super detailed format. And uh, this is also one of my interpretation, but uh, I'm going to go back and uh, start in the beginning and then just uh, stop where I need to and then explain um, in a different way how the closing hand is for this first section is. So in the Siu Lim Tao we do this. We do that. I'm not going to show you the legs. We do a cross hand and then this and then this. We're going to do our punch. And then we're going to find the center and then we do our punch. And then we're going to do the tan, come out, and we're going to do these things three times with the breathing exercises if you watched the earlier episode. Okay, and then this is the closing. This one, two, tan, hun, and then come back. And then th this is the other hand here. It's three times. And then this is the closing part that I like to uh, talk about in uh, this episode. So what happens is when you did the three ex breathing exercise of the Fok Sao and the Wu Sao that comes back. So you do this three times. And how do you close it is I like to relax my wrist first and do a pat here. And then it comes back to the center and do a straight palm thrust and it's a Tan, you gotta try to put some strength here to tan and hun, and then one, two, and bring it back. So, so that's the closing part. It's the same on both hands as you just saw. So that's the closing of this hand. And I'm gonna give you a, a scenario and and so that you can see what's happening here. Uh, what happens is you're doing a to close is you're doing a pack here. And the reason why I'm pack, I'm going to use the word packing. Um, and there's no sort of word here I know, but I'm going to make this one up. I'm going to be packing the side here. And the reason why I pack right to my shoulder blade or my shoulders here is because that someone is punching me here with their right arm. Because they are punching me with the right arm, I have no choice but to pack all the way to the, to the shoulder. But in reality, we're not going to pack right to the side here, as you can see. Uh, we're not going to pack right to the side. We're going to pack in real life. We're going to pack a little bit forward, okay? You're not going to pack all the way back here. And then what happens is you realize that your hand is already halfway out. What happens is somebody's punching you to the right and you went to pack like this. And what happens is then your hand is halfway out and you realize that his head is over here. So now this would encourage you to instead of packing the hand, you want to actually hit the head. So in this case, we're going to pack the hand, but we realize now the head is here. So now we're going to hit the head. Okay, so we're doing the form. The form is center. Okay, but in real life, you pack where the head's going to be. Okay, so if the head is here, you're going to pack the head here. When I say head, it could be his entire face. Okay, so if the head is here, you're going to pack the head here. If you, the head is here, you're going to pack the head here. Obviously, you can turn your body towards where you're going to attack. Okay. So after I pack straight, I missed. So now when I miss, I'm going like this. Now I'm giving him a kind of a chop to 
the side of his face. So I'm packing his hand, I'm hitting his face. Now his face moved to here. Obviously, why did he move there? Because he, he's ducking my, my palm thrust. So when I'm doing this, he ducks my palm thrust to here. So now I'm changing my palm thrust to a chop right up like this, right up like that. And then because I'm trying to chop him, now his head is bopping down, passing my hand and coming up on the other side. So it's more, what boxing people do is, ah, oh, they punch and then I pack this hand. As soon as I pack this hand, I'm trying to get his face. When I'm trying to get his face, he's ducking, he's ducking this way. And as he ducks this way, I'm going to go with the flow. I'm going to change my path to a chop because he's, his, his power and his direction of, of the center of gravity is that he's going like this. And now he sees that coming. He's going like this. And when he's going like this to avoid my palm strike, now I'm changing my palm strike to a chop. So now because he's moving this way, so I'm decided that I'm going to go this way with him because his body and his center of gravity is now already off like this. So now I'm chopping down this side. But when I decide to chop this side, what he's doing now, he's going like this. Okay, that's, you notice that's a stereotypical person that throws a punch. Throws the punch, sees a palm strike, duck, sees that, then sees that chop coming, goes out from the other side. Okay, so now I'm following, I'm chopping him, and I'm following, I'm chopping him, I'm following his head, his head is ducking to this side, so now I'm going like this, and I'm going to attack the other side. As soon as he comes up, he ducks, he's not going to see it. As soon as he comes up, I'm going to hoon my hand to get him on the other side as he bobs up. So that is not just a, a, a stationary move that we do. That is that you, 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 your, your hand has to be lively. Your hand has to be constantly changing. So sort of like halfway through, I'm, I'm launching my attacks. It's not going to be set in stone. It could be a palm strike, but the palm strike, oh, he's moved here. It's going to be a chop. Give me a chop here. Oh, now he moves there. So now I'm going to go and follow him. Then, and, and this kind of thing can always go around him. Because what, what this is, uh, there's actually a punch coming at this, at this point. Because when he, he does the right-handers, when he's going down and up, to come up from the other side, there's actually going to be a left hand that's being uh, thrown at me, a left punch that he's going to be throwing at me. So, so here is is another way to 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 describe what the ceiling toe is. Uh, the problem with uh, everybody, and I do mean a lot of people, that the ceiling toe seems to them is a very rigid, seems to be a very stationary form that you go like this, you know? But it's rigid only because you think it's a rigid form. It, it is not supposed to be performed rigidly in real life. We have to teach you the form rigidly so that you understand the actual structure of ceiling toe. But to, to use it, you have to use it in a fluid flowing motion kind of way, which a lot of people think that in real life you need to, you need to punch and you need to do it rigidly. 
but that's furthest from the truth. What is rigid is in the minds of the people that are learning it. We, 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 we teach you in that form, but you need to use that form inside of your non-rigid moves. Uh, in real life, I'm going to see if I can try to kind of perform this in real life. Your, your, your natural position, as soon as you do this, you try to go like that. Okay? And then as soon as you come up here and you do that, obviously, every move that you do, you have to advance. Okay? But I, I can't advance too much because of my camera and my positioning here. So, so you're like this, you go like this, you go like that. And then now he, he's, he's ducking this way. So you're going like this, and then you're trying to chop. You're gonna chop him down. Because you, you change from a pack to a, to a face, face pack, but the face pack he's moved. So now from the face pack, he's ducking this way, you're gonna do a chop. So you gotta move in and do a chop right down the neck area here. When you do a chop, the neck area, now he's moving, he's moving down to here. So, basically, that is what this thing is. Now, that didn't look like this stiff things that you learn in Silium Tau. So, the rigidness is actually in your imagination. This is teaching you how to be more flexible. How your hand, the tip of your hand is kind of like a snake, a certain kinds of Wing Chun family in China. It's called the snake and crane hands so that your hands can can be quickly going around someone's arms, around someone's punches and you see, oh, there's an opening here. You can sneak your hand around someone's punch. Around, you see a hole here, you see a hole there. Somebody's doing this and you see a hole here that allows you to snick your hand around people's arms as they're trying to punch you so that you can get these openings, sneak around and then punch. So that is uh, the explanation of the closing hands of this part of Silim Tao. And I hope you enjoy it. Uh, Wear a mask and uh, have a nice day. Thank you. Bye.